Hey guys, it's Medicosis Perfect Snellus, where medicine makes perfect sense. Let's continue our labs playlist. We are in a series on nephrology. In previous videos, we talked about urea and the blood urea nitrogen. We talked about creatinine clearance and the GFR estimation, as well as the serum creatinine. Today, it's time to compare between the serum blood urea nitrogen and the serum creatinine, both of which are elevated if I have kidney failure. Now let's get started. Please watch my videos in order for maximum understanding and retention, particularly the previous five or six videos. Let's start with creatinine, baby. Where did it come from? It's a product of metabolism of creatine phosphate. Who's that? It's in my muscle. It's a source of energy, as we have discussed before. It's called the phosphagen system. Then when you metabolize creatine phosphate, it becomes creatinine. It goes to the blood. It's excreted exclusively by your kidneys. No other organ excretes creatinine but your kidneys. And the kidney should excrete all of it. It should not reabsorb it back. Instead, it will dump all of it into the urine. We talked about serum creatinine before and the causes of elevated serum creatinine versus is depressed serum creatinine. Please pause and review. We're done with creatinine. Let's talk about urea. Where did it come from? From protein metabolism or amino acid metabolism, or you can say ammonia metabolism and pyrimidine metabolism. Don't forget that. You digest proteins into amino acids by deamination and transamination. Ammonia will leave the chat in the urea cycle inside my liver's hepatocytes. Ammonia will be converted into urea hence urea cycle. This urea will end up in the blood and the kidney should excrete that urea into the urine. All of it? No. Some of it should be excreted, some of it will go back to the blood, i.e. should be reabsorbed in a process known as back diffusion. Why? Because it helps us concentrate the urine. And antidiuretic hormone approves this message. Don't forget that your urea is made of what? Nitrogen? We talked about serum blood urea nitrogen before. Here are the causes of elevated serum BUN and the causes of decreased serum BUN. One of the causes of increased serum BUN is kidney failure. One of the causes of decreased serum BUN is liver failure. Who made the urea? The liver. Who should excrete the urea but did not? The kidney. Now let's compare between the two, serum blood urea nitrogen versus serum creatinine. Serum blood urea nitrogen is partially reabsorbed. The kidney takes back, let's say, 40% of that urea. Why do we reabsorb it back from the kidney's tubule to the kidney's interstitium? Because it helps us concentrate the urine. And since this BUN is partially reabsorbed and 40% is a big deal, we cannot use BUN to estimate your GFR. That will be not so accurate to put it mildly. But look at the serum creatinine. It's partially secreted, yeah. However, it's just 5 to 10%, so you can correct that no problem. It's not out of the league of the GFR, so we can use creatinine clearance to estimate GFR. Is urea useful to us? Yes, it's useful to your kidney so that the kidney can concentrate the urine with the help of the counter current multiplier from the loop of Henle with the approval of the antidiuretic hormone from your hypothalamus supraoptic nucleus. How about serum creatinine? Does it serve any physiological function? Oh, heck no. That's why the kidney did not bother to reabsorb it. The kidney dumps it and dumps it some more. BON depends on the liver function. Who made the urea? The liver. Liver. How about creatinine? Did the liver make you creatinine? No, I'm a product of muscle metabolism. When you contract your muscles, creatine gets metabolized into creatinine. Now you can argue, if you're super sophisticated, that the liver is the one who made creatine and then creatine went to the muscle and then creatine got broken down into creatine, but that's a long story. Let's keep it simple, stupid. Blood urea nitrogen is urea, depends on ammonia, which depends on amino acids, which depends on my protein intake. As for creatinine, yes, it depends on protein intake in an indirect way because it depends on muscle mass. When protein gets broken down, eventually you get urea. When creatine phosphate gets broken down, eventually you get creatinine. Look at the pathways, pause and review. Who excretes urea? The kidney. Only? No. Other organs might excrete urea under toxic circumstances 
when the BUN is so high and so toxic. Like the two ladies that were talking in a Starbucks the other day, my past relationship was so toxic. When BUN gets so high and so toxic like this, it will start oozing out of your skin, creating the famous or infamous urea frosting of the skin. By the way, the moment you see a patient who is in acute renal failure, you will never forget the patient's faces. Their appearance, their look is unique. It's something that you will never forget throughout your life. These toxic faces are horrifying. And just like a good nurse can detect your cephalic vein from two miles away, you will be able to look and diagnose a patient with acute kidney failure from far away. As for creatinine, however, it's excreted exclusively by your kidneys. No skin, no gut, just kidneys. Reference range for serum BUN is between 10 and 20. The number that I like is anything below 18 is normal. How about serum creatinine? It differs between males and females because males on average have bigger muscle mass. Therefore, I just memorize 1.1. If it's less than 1.1, we're usually okay. Above that, I start to worry. And please don't you ever forget the non-linear relationship between serum creatinine and the glomerular filtration rate, which we talked about in a previous video. Do you remember these two graphs? Which one is urea? Which one is creatinine? Let's take one point from the x-axis, which is the filtered amount of whatever, and then you go up. When it comes to graph B, as you see here, it is excreted less than graph A which means graph A is excreted more. Who's that doofus that the kidney excretes and then excretes some more creatinine? But why is the kidney not excreting all of the urea? Because the urea needs to be reabsorbed partially for the back diffusion for the counter current multiplier to concentrate your urine. If you want to learn about serum BUN to serum creatinine ratio, please refer to my previous video here in this playlist. To master the counter current multiplier, ADH's effect on the kidney, and other kidney physiology topics with many equations, download my renal physiology course at medicosisperfectionalis.com. To learn about kidney pharmacology, the diuretics, download my cardiac pharmacology course. If you want to watch all of my 300 plus premium videos right now on YouTube, including double the playback speed, just click on the join button below this video and subscribe to the highest tier and go indulge yourself in 70 plus hours of some good, clean, doozy medical education. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, support me here or here. Go to my website for courses, notes, and cases. And don't forget, be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionalis, where medicine makes perfect sense.